Okay. So, um, coming back to our histograms, what we looked at um, previously was how um, was how the miles per hour, uh, the miles over the speed limit, miles per hour over the speed limit compared for white drivers versus non-white drivers, and we saw that they look basically the same. Um, it's also basically a normal distribution, so we could compare the averages, which is what we did, and we found there's about a half half a mile an hour difference um, of minority drivers, uh, of non-white drivers uh, going faster. Um, and maybe there's some threshold cut off at 20 miles per hour over the speed limit, and maybe that's why um, we're seeing a greater number of non-white drivers get tickets. Um, so to kind of evaluate this, what we're going to do is um, we're going to try to look at whether everything else is equal basically right so we're going to go ahead and define a function that allows us to create comparative histograms where we compare the rates of and i know you can't see this right now but you will very shortly um so basically this is a function that's going to generate comparative uh charts it's not just histograms actually charts of white versus non-white drivers based on the column name passed in so we're going to compare the outcomes of white and non-white drivers based on age, based on sex, based on miles per hour that they were going miles per hour over, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and that's going to let us uh, try to assess what we think the influence of the other factors might be. So we're going to get a bunch of stuff out of here. So we've, we're sort of looking at the age distribution, the comparative age distribution. We do see that uh, minority drivers uh, seem to be a bit younger. Um, they are more male. Um, they are going eh, to a certain extent, uh, fast, uh, sorry. Oh no. Interesting. They're, they seem to be their, their straight up miles per hour seems to be similar or a little bit lower. Um, again, their miles per hour over looks basically the same agency. I think is super interesting here. Um, where we see, uh, non-white drivers getting ticketed vastly more often by Boston PD than white drivers are. Um, our state, uh, our state troopers are actually pretty much on par, um, and locally we see uh, a reverse effect. And whether or not they are, um, whether or not they are locals. So if they're locals, they're actually getting ticketed more, slightly more. If they're not locals, they're getting ticketed slightly less. So again, all of these are factors that might be contributing to this apparent um, pattern of minority drivers getting ticketed more than white drivers. So again, what we're able to characterize here is really just what is in our data at the moment, um, or that is what we are able to characterize. Um, we know they have more people in their twenties, they skew male, they're going a little bit faster when they're pulled over and they're less likely to be stopped by local police and more likely to be stopped by Boston police. And they tend to be, um, stopped. Well, I guess they tend to be stopped. I don't know if that's right. Um, in any in any case, this doesn't give us a clear picture of what is causing uh, what's causing this discrepancy. And of course, it's very similar to the experience that we would have in any other case where we have a bunch of factors that might be influencing our outcomes. Uh, we want to be able to say with some level of authority what is driving it. So this is where logistic regression comes in. Um, Again, we're going to use logistic regression rather than linear regression because logistic regression is what fits a curve and it lets us work with binary, depend binary dependent variables. Um, but other than that, it's very much the same. Um, so to set up the regression, obviously we need to import our uh, models first. Um, and um, let's start by looking at miles power per hour over the speed limit and whether they got a ticket um, as zero or one, right? So we're going back to our tickets versus warnings here. And we want to say is let's create a new column called busted. And if they, if ticket is true, right? If it was a ticket, not a warning, um, then we're going to look at that compared to how far over the speed limit they were going, right? So we want to see if miles per hour over the speed limit is strongly influencing, um, the likelihood of getting a ticket. Um, we're going to actually sort this. Uh, so we're actually going to do this sort of ordered because it's going to make it a little bit easier for us to 
see what's happening. And then we're going to plot ourselves a scatter. Okay, and what we get out is some is, looks something like this. Okay, so again, because we have this binary dependent variable, there's nothing in the middle, right? The scatter is really more looks like two lines, um, but that's okay. Um, because of the fact that we see things that are a little bit farther to the right here, right? This is where y equals one, so they got a ticket and busted is true. Um, well, busted is whether or not they got a ticket. Um, we, we can think of this as having sort of an upward slope. And if we want to, we can actually try and fit a line to this, although it's a little a little uh, unusual to try to do that, right? We get this sort of weird looking thing. This is where um, we sort of reach the limits of our linear regression because, again, we're trying to fit a line to something that doesn't really make sense as a line. And so instead, this is where we're going to fit a logistic function instead. So what is a logistic function? A logistic function is just a different type of curve. A line is actually a type of curve. Um, a logistic function is just a different type of curve that's shaped like an S. Um, and we can we can define a basic logistic function and plot its range over a sort of arbitrary uh, set of values as a way to just kind of take a look at it, right? What we're seeing here is that in our example, the, uh, oops, um, what we're seeing in our example is basically saying that the center of this function x is 0 has a probability of 0.5. Basically saying, you know, at 0.5, at, at x equals 0, where my independent variable is 0 in this generic model, um, I could either go with true or false, right? I can go with either 0 or 1. And we can demonstrate this by just running the logistic, and we see that it has a probability of 0.5. So we're going to apply the logistic regression to our data, because again, our data is um, has a binary dependent variable, and see what happens. So again, I want to emphasize here that what we're looking at is very similar to what we did for our linear regression. Um, we're going to, we're, instead of fitting a linear regression, we're fitting logistic re regression from sklearn. We're not using the one we just made. Um, and we have to add this Ravel component because some change in the library wants a different type of, uh, it wants a different kind of um, array shape. And so we use Ravel to get that array shape. Um, basically, I'm going to do the scatter plot, right, which is the same thing that I did up here. But then I want to fit this curve to it and see what happens. And so now I'm going to plot the prediction of the fitted model. You'll see it looks pretty similar, right? The line <clears throat> is, you know, y equals mx plus b. Um, but I'm fitting that line. I'm doing a prediction based on that line and then plotting it. And I'm getting this nice magenta curve, right? So what we see is there seems to be a change point around 10 or 20. Um, we could do the same with predicting the probability um, as we did in the previous case, um, although we'd only want to look at the second one in this case, right? So in this case, we're going to run, um, we're going to do the same thing, and we're going to predict the probability of x for the second column because the second column is where the probability of getting a ticket is true, right? So same thing. Okay, so one thing that is interesting about logistic regressions is that um, if, we, if we think about what the coefficients mean in our linear regression, in our linear regression, the coefficient is the slope of the line, right? It is the change in the dependent variable for every unit change in the given dependent variable. Um, the slope coefficients of a logistic regression um, mean something different. Um, but also pretty cool, which is the odds ratio. And so looking at the odds ratio is what lets us make some claims about the odds of an outcome based on the factor, based on a given independent factor in our equation, in our um, regression. So we'll start by looking at a simplistic example. This is just a made up example about the odds of getting sick if you eat certain things. Um, <clears throat> we have people who ate chicken or fish at dinner and, uh, and some of them got sick. And so we're going to see how... Um, 
how we can use the coefficients of the logistic regression to predict the odds. So the odds of getting sick if you ate chicken is the number of people who ate chicken and got sick divided by the number who, of people who ate chicken and didn't get sick. And again, we're only seeing fish in the label here because if you ate chicken, then your fish value is zero. Um, well, that one came out a little messed up, but here's another way to look at it, right? The odds of getting sick if you ate chicken um, are 0.5. The odds of getting sick if you ate fish are two, right? And so the odds ratio is just the comparison between these two. Um, so again, pretty simple in concept, the ratio of these sets of odds. So it measures your odds of getting how, it measures how your odds of getting sick changed, right? If you ate the fish. Um, and so we can obviously just do this using our calculated values, chicken beef fish, and so the odds of getting sick goes up if you ate the fish. Um, but we can also look at this with a logistic regression, right? So we can sort of calculate it on our raw values, but we can also do it with a logistic regression. Um, and we can use um, the coefficient. We can get the exponent. Sorry, we can get the coefficient of a logistic regression, and we see that it's a very similar value to what we had calculated. So it's not going to be precisely the same because, of course, this is a curve that we're calculating when we do the logistic regression. So it's not going to be perfectly the same, um, but it is very, very close. So let's go back to our tickets example now that we have an understanding of what the logistic regression coefficients mean, because that's going to help us understand how to interpret um, how to interpret the output from our tickets data. So. Basically, what we're going to do is we are going to code our variables as binary, right? So um, make them basically convert everything to zero or one instead of those letter values that we had. And then we're going to do a logistic regression. And again, this should look kind of familiar. Um, we're going to do a logistic regression with multiple variables at the same time. And what do we find out here? When we print out the odds ratio for each example, what we find is that basically, if you are a non-white driver, you have, being a non-white driver increases your odds of getting a ticket more than any other factor when you control for all of the factors. So the questions that we may have had from looking at our histograms up here of, okay, we can see that there are these discrepancies between our white and non-white driver population. The question is, which of these is most influential? We can answer that now because we have this odds ratio, because we know that the odds of being ticketed if you are non-white are one, roughly one and a half times that of, are roughly 1.5 times that as, of being white, <laughs> of if you are a white driver, uh, when all other things are equal. So yes, being driving faster has some influence. Um, uh, being quote unquote less male has an influence, your age has an influence, but the biggest influence is whether or not you are non-white. And so again, this is just to emphasize that as we've seen with um, our linear regression, what we're able to do here is to say something about um, how a given independent variable affects the dependent variable. We can use our regression process to control for the effects of multiple variables simultaneously. Um, obviously, we still have to uh, we still have to think about things like confounding, um, and in a sense, that's what we've done. That's why we looked at all of those things independently um, in order to determine which ones might be impacting our outcome. So, uh, hopefully, this is fairly clear. Obviously, uh, we will talk about this more in class. Um, I will post this notebook for you all. Um, but in the meantime, so uh, if you'd like to, please go ahead and step through and make note of any questions you have, and we will talk about them very soon. Cheers.